everyone welcome to my channel today I'm going to simplify the difference between static versus dynamic stretching uh, everyone's heard of the word stretching which is uh, basically referring to flexibility of a muscle or soft tissues around the joints uh, stretching is an integral key component for any fitness program uh, also for you know general health maintenance uh, it's important they say you know you may have to do strength training every other day or twice or three times a week but when it comes to uh, stretching and flexibility that needs to be done every single day anyway so let's get into the the nitty-gritty of what you need to know about static versus uh, dynamic stretching okay now let's talk about static stretching today I'm not going to talk about what muscles now, how do you do a static stretching and I'm not going to choose the different muscles to talk about dynamic stretching I'm going to talk about take a muscle and apply the two principles of what's static and what's dynamic to a muscle so that it can increase some understanding and helps to simplify the concept behind this and then you can always improve your knowledge by you know studying or referring to more literature behind these two uh, stretching areas all right so when you say static stretching I mean it's the um, yeah, it, it's these it's the type of stretching where you're gonna hold uh, a joint segment for a particular period of time for example now let's take as an example for a muscle like hamstrings so what is static stretching for a muscle like hamstring so for this again going back to your basics of anatomy okay now you know very well that the hamstring is a muscle at the back of your thigh uh, it, it crosses your hip at the back and it crosses your knees joints at the back here as well so technically the hamstrings are designed to flex your knee and extend your hip now if you want to stretch that muscle uh, just do the opposite movement so pretty much you will flex your hip and you will extend your knee and if I just put it on a platform like that keeping my knee straight and if I just lean forward by keeping my back nice and straight I'm going to feel that stretch right at the back of my thigh. Now, this is a good example of what a static stretch is. This is a static stretch for the muscle hamstring. So, I, I passively move into and elongate that muscle without activating any of the other muscles, purely focused on that muscle only. Now, I hold it for a period of time, I feel that stretch, and I release. This is a static stretch for the muscle hamstrings. Now, what are the parameters for static stretching? So when you stretch a muscle statically, you may have to hold that anywhere from, say, 45 seconds to a minute. I mean, a minute is good. So you can hold, say, 45 seconds. You got to feel that stretch and you're going to release and come back, get a little bit of a break and you can go to the next leg and do the same thing for about 45 seconds and then repeat that one more time, right? So that's a static stretch. Now let's compare this to... Um, how can I do the same thing as a dynamic stretch for my hamstrings? All right, so let's let's see how this is done. Now, when you say a dynamic stretch, it involves more of an active movement of the components of the joints at the same time trying to stretch the muscle. You're not holding a stretch, rather you are repeatedly moving the joint segment beyond its range so that you're stretching those muscles. Now, dynamic stretching is very, very effective, especially before you participate in a sports activity. Let, let's put it this way. So let's say I need to go and play soccer. So what do I do? First, I need to warm up my muscles. So I would do some jogging or some running. I you know, increase my body temperature. I increase blood flow into my muscles. Now when my body is ready, now I'm going to do something called the dynamic stretches. There's a lot of research which shows that dynamic stretches can increase the muscle temperature faster and it can elongate the muscle and prepare you for that particular activity like sports. If I'm going to be a sprinter, now I need more speed. If I'm playing sports like soccer, I need more agility and movements. So by doing static stretching before a sport is not going to get me those benefits, but dynamic stretching does. Uh, so this is why you need to do the dynamic stretches before you participate in a sports or any fitness routine and when you want to cool down that's when you do the static stretching all right all right let's get into the dynamic stretching so we already talked about how to statically stretch your hamstrings 
And then now let's go into how to dynamically stretch your hamstrings. Now, for example, I'm going to hold on to a segment just for extra balance. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to swing, start swinging my leg forward and backward by keeping my knees nice and straight. Now this is just to warm up the muscles. You can see here, I'm just going as simple and smooth. I'm going to slowly increase the angle. Now you notice the knees are still straight. I'm going back and forth. And at one point, when I get my leg a little higher, close to about a 90 degree angle at the hip, I'm going to start feeling that stretch at the bottom of my thigh. Now I'm going to feel that. Now remember, never do this cold. That's why you need a warm up before you do your dynamic stretches. At one point, you notice I would start feeling the stretch. Now, what I would do is, if I need more of a stretch, so I would go more higher. You can see that? Higher. Higher. Now, I feel that stretch right there when I do this. So, when you're doing dynamic stretches, when you notice that you're ready to fire all those muscles to get those stretches, I would do probably three or four movements of going high. That's one, two, that's three, and that's four. That's all I do. Feel that stretch right there, and I'm going to repeat it on the other side. So I'm going to keep swinging back and forth. It's the same principle as static, keeping the leg up and I'm holding it. But only thing is, I'm bouncing the movement and I'm creating a stretch right there. Principles are same. Keep the knee straight, flex your hip, and you're going to hit an angle a little higher, and you're going to feel that stretch on the hamstring. So you notice we're not holding the stretch like static. But we are just bouncing the movement up and down. So three or four is good once you get that range, right? So that's how you do the, the dynamic stretches for your hamstring. So let's take another muscle as an example. Let's take the quads. So here's the muscle quadriceps. And when you want to do a static stretch, so this is what you do. So you would go into a segment, you'll pull it, and you hold it up for about 30, 40, or even 60 seconds. That's an example of a static stretch. So do the same principle. This time, watch carefully. Do the same thing. It's bending. It's bending. So I'm going to do slowly bending. You can see it. And do that. See that? At one point, I'm going to increase the speed and kick the leg at the back. When I do that, I feel that stretch at the front. Right there. Right there. See it? That's it. I do the same activity three or four times. I feel the stretch on the quads this time. So that's an example of a dynamic stretch. Here's another one. Let's take the hip. The front of the hip. I call them hip flexors, right? So if I want to stretch the hip flexors, I have to do extension of the knee. I would just lunge and I would feel the stretch. That's static. Very famously known as a fencer stretch. That's static. So what do I do if I need that stretch? This time, if you remember, taking the leg up for hams, if you just kick the leg back at a force, you're gonna feel that on the hip flexors this time. So once again, I'm gonna go backward, backward, backward. I'm not going up for hands, but remote, I'm going backwards. I don't wanna bend my legs, but if I bend my legs, I'm gonna feel it on the quads. I'd rather keep it straight and push it at the back, or at one point, I feel it at the front of my hip flexors. So some athletes, what they do, they combine two stretches. So how do you do that? So take a look. So you can take the leg up, and at the same time, you can swing it at the back. So you're getting the benefit of stretching your hams and stretching your hip flexors at the same time. Take a look here. So they go one, backward, back, 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 back. See that? That's getting both stretches at the same time. So there's different ways of doing stretches dynamically and standing. So here's an example of uh, an upper extremity muscle stretches related to dynamic. Let's take the muscle uh, pectoralis major. Now, everyone knows how to stretch your pectoralis major. So, you know, you can take your hand up in a reverse T, you can go to a corner of a wall, and you can just make sure your hands are clamped on the wall. You lean forward and you hold that stretch for about 45 to 60 seconds. So that's more of a, a static stretch. So if you want to stretch your pecs dynamically. So once again, the same thing. So you take your hands from the front, then swing at the back slowly until you feel that stretch on the front of my pecs. I feel it right away on both sides. I swing it with some force and take it at the back, I would feel the stretch, right? So the big advantage of doing dynamic stretches is the reason why these muscles yield a lot better is because you're activating 
the agonist muscle. Now, if you remember studying the PNF techniques, which is also known as proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation for stretching. Now, you notice there is a technique where you activate the agonist and then right away you'll stretch the muscles which you want to stretch. Same principle is applied here as well. So when I'm swinging my leg up to stretch my hands, remember I'm actively contracting my hip flexors. At the same time when I reach height, I'm trying to stretch my hamstrings. So this way the stretch yields a lot more. The muscles are going to be elongated much better for an activity too. Okay, so once again to wrap up, dynamic stretches are great before you go into a major activity or sports or a fitness routine. And when you finish that activity at the end, make sure you cool down with static stretches. So start off with a good warm up, then you go into your dynamic stretches and then go into your activity. Like let's say you want to go into a game, you want to do that, finish a game, and then you finish off with cool down, which is by using static stretches. Okay. Hopefully this video helps you to understand the difference between a static stretch and a dynamic stretch, the difference between the two, uh, how it can be applied to different muscles of different regions of the body. All right. Good luck.